Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a free, complete course for the CCNA. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with the series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this free series of videos. Thanks for your help. Also, remember to download this practice lab from the link in the description and try it out yourself in Packetracer. If you want more labs like these, I highly recommend picking up Boson's NetSim for the CCNA. Click the link in the video description to check it out. It's a network simulator like Packet Tracer, but it's even better. You can use it up to CCNP level even, whereas Packet Tracer is too limited to do much beyond CCNA level. Here you can see all of the labs available in NetSim for CCNA. These are all detailed, guided labs that not only help you practice what you've learned, but really test your understanding. So I think NetSim is a fantastic study tool for the CCNA. If you want more practice relevant to what we're covering now at this point in the course, look here in the Network Access section. These labs about VLANs and trunking feature both DTP and VTP. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video for a preview of one of these labs. If you want to grab a copy of NetSim for CCNA, follow the link in the video description. I highly recommend it. Let's get started with today's lab. Basically, we'll go through some of the DTP and VTP configurations we covered in the lecture video. There are four VLANs in the lab, VLAN 10, 20, 30, and 40. We'll use VTP to share the VLAN configurations between these switches. So step one says to configure the switch ports, connecting switches as trunks, and disable DTP on them. So G01 on switch one, G01 and G02 on switch 2, and G01 on switch 3. Let's go on switch 1. First, enter privileged exec mode with enable, then global config mode with conf t. Then configure G01. Interface G01. Actually, before configuring it, let's check the current administrative and operational modes with this command. Do show interface G01 switch port. Okay, as I mentioned in the lecture, the administrative mode is dynamic auto by default, same as Switch 2's G01 interface, so the operational mode is static access. Notice that negotiation of trunking is on, so DTP frames are indeed being sent out of this interface. Actually, let's go into Packet Tracer's simulation mode to see them being sent. I will click through here, and you should see lots of STP frames being sent, some CDP frames, as well as some DTP frames. STP and CDP are other protocols that I will talk about later in the course. Actually, I think STP will be the topic of day 20's lecture video. So the point is you can see DTP negotiation frames are indeed being sent out of the switch ports. However, because all are in dynamic auto mode, no trunks are formed. Now let's go back to real time mode and return to the CLI. I'll configure a trunk now. Switch port mode trunk. Now let's do the show command again. Do show interface G01 switch port. Okay, now both the administrative and operational modes are trunk. However, negotiation of trunking, DTP, is still on. Let's disable it. Switch port no negotiate. Okay, let's check once more. Do show interface G01 switch port. Great. Now negotiation of trunking is disabled. Next up is switch two. Enter privileged exec mode with enable, then global config mode with conf t. Configurations on G01 and G02 will be the same. So I will configure both at the same time. Interface range G01 to two. Now let's configure them as trunks and disable DTP. Switch port mode trunk, Switch port no negotiate. And let's check. Do show interface G01 switch port. Okay, both modes are trunk and negotiation is off. Looks good. Next, G02. Do show interface G02 switch port. Same, looks good. Finally, let's configure switch 3. Again, enter privileged exec mode with enable, then global config mode. Conf T. Configure the interface, interface G01, switch port mode trunk, switch port no negotiate. And let's check. 
do show interface G01 switch port. Okay, looks good. So step one is complete. Now we'll configure VTP. I'll return to switch one. Let's exit out of interface config mode, exit. And check the current VTP situation. Do show VTP status. The output looks a little different than in the iOS version I used in the lecture, but the same fields are here. Different switches or different iOS versions might have slightly different behavior and show slightly different output. So just be aware of that and adapt. VTP version displays as two. However, down here, VTP V2 mode is disabled. So really version one is operating. The domain name is blank too, as expected. So let's configure it now. First, the domain name, VTP domain CCNA. And let's create the VLANs, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, exit. Let's check again. Do show VTP status. So the domain name is CCNA. The number of VLANs is now eight and the configuration revision number is three because it increased by one for each VLAN we created. Now we haven't done any VTP configurations on switch two and switch three. Do you think they will have added VLANs 10, 20, and 30? According to what I said in the lecture, they should. When they receive VTP advertisements from Switch 1, they should join Switch 1's VTP domain and sync their VLAN databases. Let's check on Switch 2. First, get out of interface config mode. Exit. Do show VTP status. Indeed, it has joined the VTP domain and the revision number is three. Let's check the VLANs. Do show VLAN brief. There they are, VLAN 10, 20, and 30. Let's check switch three also. Exit. Do show VTP status. Looks like switch three has synced as well. Let's check the VLANs. Do show VLAN brief. So switch three has also added VLANs 10, 20, and 30 without any configuration. Next for step three, Let's configure switch two in VTP transparent mode and add VLAN 40. So set the VTP mode with this command, VTP mode transparent. Now let's add VLAN 40, VLAN 40, exit. And let's check VTP, do show VTP status. So the revision number is now zero because it's in transparent mode. The number of VLANs is now nine. It kept the VLANs it synced from switch one before, but now it has added VLAN 40. Do you think switch one and switch three have added VLAN 40 now? They shouldn't since switch two is in transparent mode. Let's check on switch one. Okay, let's check the VLANs. Do show VLAN brief. As expected, no VLAN 40. Let's go on switch three now. Do show VLAN brief. Again, no VLAN 40. That's because switches in VTP transparent mode don't send VTP advertisements. Although switch two will forward VTP advertisements between switch one and switch three. Let's go to step four. Configure switch three in client mode. We're on switch three now, so let's do it. VTP mode client. Now let's try to add another VLAN. VLAN 50 here on switch three. VLAN 50. As you can see, we are not allowed to configure new VLANs on switch three now that it is in VTP client mode. So if we want to add new VLANs on switch three, we have to configure them on switch one, which will advertise the changes to switch three, which will then sync its VLAN database. Finally, let's do step five. Configure the switch ports connected to end hosts in the correct VLANs configure them as access ports, and check if DTP is still enabled on them. Starting here on switch three, F01 in VLAN 10, uh, two and three are in VLAN 30, and F04 is in VLAN 20. Interface F01. 
Before I configure it, let me check if DTP is enabled. It should be. Do show interface F01 switch port. As you can see, negotiation of trunking is on. So switch three will continue sending DTP frames to PC5, even though it will never form a trunk here. Now let's configure it. Switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. And let's see if that disabled DTP. Do show interface F01 switch port. So as you can see, manually configuring an access port with the command switch port mode access does indeed disable DTP. Negotiation of trunking is now off. Now that we've confirmed that, I'll just quickly run through the rest of the configurations. Interface range F02 to 3. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 30. Interface F04. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. Okay, next up, switch to. Interface range F01 to 2. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 40. Okay, and finally switch 1. Interface range F01 to 2. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 10. Interface F03. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. Okay, so in this lab, we took a look at DTP and VTP configurations. That's all for this lab. Let's move on to take a look at Boson NetSim for CCNA. Okay, for today's Boson NetSim lab preview, I've chosen a fairly simple lab, configuring VTP client mode on switches. As you can see here, there are quite a few of these Boson NetSim guided labs provided for you. And some of them are quite complex, quite difficult, but some of them are more simple. So just to show you that, I have chosen one of the more simple labs today, configuring VTP client mode on switches. I've already loaded it, so I'll just go on lab instructions here. The objective, configure VLAN trunking protocol, VTP on a switch. Test VLAN updates from one switch configured as a VTP server. Prevent a second switch from creating VLANs. And here is the topology. Two switches connected with two interfaces, fast ethernet 11, and fast ethernet 12. Here are the commands you need to know to complete the lab and a summary of the IP addresses. So there are nine steps to this lab. Let's do the first uh, six, I think, until configuring a VTP client. So step one, configure switch run with the appropriate host name. Configure fast ethernet 11 and 12 to always be trunks. Okay, so I am already in the CLI of switch one. So let's do enable conf t and set the host name, host switch one. Okay, and then fast ethernet 11 and 12 to always be trunks. Interface range, F011 to 12. Uh, first, let's check the operational mode. Do show interface F011 switch port. Okay, so it is already in dynamic desirable mode and operating as a trunk but we want to configure it to always be a trunk. So we will manually configure it as a trunk. I assume fast ethernet at 012 is also the same. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's configure them to always be a trunk. Switch port mode trunk. And let's check fast ethernet 11, administrative mode trunk, operational mode trunk, and fast ethernet 12 is the same. Okay, next step two is do the same thing on switch two. So here under devices, click on switch two and click on console to access the CLI. Enable conf t hostname of switch two, interface range F011 to 12, switch mode trunk. And I'll check, show interface F011 switch port. Ah, so I forgot the do at the front of the command. So if you're in this situation and you want to return to the beginning of the command to type do or type no to cancel it, just hit control A on your keyboard. Then type do space enter. 
Okay, administrative and operational mode, trunk. So this interface will always be a trunk. And fast ethernet, 0, 12, same. Okay, on switch one and switch two, configure the VTP domain name to be Cisco. So let's do that. I'll exit out of interface configuration mode. Let's check the current VTP configuration. Do show VTP status. Okay, so it already has a VTP domain name pre-configured, big domain. If this was null, um, actually let's check on switch two also. Do show VTP status. Same, okay, so it is also pre-configured in big domain. If both of them didn't have a domain yet, if you configured the VTP domain on one of them, the other would then sync to that and change its domain name to that name. But because they are already pre-configured, we have to configure the domain name on both. So VTP domain Cisco. Okay, and switch to also VTP domain Cisco. There we go. Okay, on switch one, verify that the switch is configured as a VTP server. So we'll do that same show command, do show VTP status. Yes, it is. It is in the default operating mode of VTP server. Uh, configure switch two as a VTP client. Okay, it also is a server. So VTP mode client. And let's verify with a, again with a do show VTP status. Okay, so it has changed to operating mode of client. Okay, so there are a few more steps in this lab, but I will leave it here for today. If you want to get a copy of NetSim, please follow the link in the description. Again, if you can, I highly recommend you do. These are fantastic guided labs and uh, plenty of practice to help you get ready for your CCNA. Okay, so follow that link in the description. Back to our Packet Tracer lab for a second. I want to show you one more feature of VTP that I didn't mention in the lecture video. It's the VTP password. A switch will reject any VTP advertisement if the password doesn't match. So let's go back on switch one. I'll set the password with this command, VTP password, and I'll make it Cisco. Now let's make another VLAN, VLAN 50, exit. Do show VTP status. So the revision number is now four, and the number of VLANs is nine. Let's go see if switch three accepts this advertisement. Do show VTP status. So switch three has a revision number of three and eight VLANs. It has not accepted the advertisement. What if I set an incorrect password? VTP password CCNA. Do show VTP status. It still doesn't accept the advertisement. Now let's set the correct password. VTP password Cisco. Do show VTP status. Okay, you can see switch three has now accepted the advertisement and synced with switch one. Just wanted to show you that extra feature of VTP. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and share the video with anyone else studying for the CCNA. If you want to leave a tip, check the links in the description. I'm also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token tips via the Brave browser. That's all for now.